So the 15th edition of Lesotho's iconic 116-kilometer Moshwe Shwe walk is set to resume next month after a COVID-19 enforced hiatus. It is said that it follows in the footsteps of King Moshwe Shwe I as he sought refuge for the Batu or Basotho nation in the early 19th century. Organizers say this year's walk will focus on giving back to the underprivileged from Basotho communities. Joining us for more on the planned resumption of the Mushwe Shwe walk is founder Tabo Maritlane. Uh, Morena, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? My sister? Very well, thank you. So maybe, uh, you know, a teaching <laughs> moment, if you will, and you take us back to the 19th century uh, when Mushwe Shwe I uh, embarked on the journey to Taba Busi. What was going on? Okay, basically there was a war between the tribes. So then in Kim Mushwe Shwe was born in 1786. 1805, we went to initiation school. 1810, in our culture, Hote, then so when they take you away from your family, you stay with your wife. So then he went to Botabo, they settled there. Then when he was there at Botabo, there was a war that he fought with King Mantatisi. I think that was a wake up call to him. Because then, because of the mountain was easy to access, and people would come and fight with him without, you know, even he was not, he was not alert. So then what happened is this then, in 1824, they decided to move from Botabo to Mengwaneng to Tawabusi. So then obviously when they left Botabo, they went to his home village, Mengwaneng. Mm -hmm. So then after the harvest at night, they started to move. Then on their way, they met the carnivals, and the carnivals ate his grandfather and left only collar bones. In Sesotho, he called them Dipedu. There is a village there which is called Dipet at the moment. So they arrive at Tababusi at night. That's why it's called Tababusi, the mountain at night, because they arrive at night. Yes, uh, because of the war between the tribes, people couldn't settle at one place. They were running away from uh, uh, their places because of the war. So then, yeah, what happened? What caused the cannibals? Because then the people couldn't settle at one place, so then their cattle were captured. Apart from that, uh, then they decided to say, okay, because you can't run with old people and the young ones. Then they decided to start to eating each other. So that's why the cannibals mm. were there in Lesotho. So at the moment, we don't have cannibals because of Kim the I. What happened is this, Kim Mushoshu, after they ate his grandfather, he wanted to know where is the grave of his father. So that's when they found that the, 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 the collarbones at Dipetu. So then that route on its own, it's a historical route. They took nine days. For us, we, t we take only three days because there is no cattle, mm. there is no luggage that we have, you know, we walk on our own. So basically what I'm saying is this, because of that uh, trek from Mianghuanian to Tawabusibu, that's why you have in this country, which is called Lesotho, that's why you are proud of Basotho, because Kim Bushosha took Zulus, Kozas, and everybody, put them together. He got married to 140 wives, why? Every tribe, but they've got a girl, they got married to them. Because then, because the whole idea was, when they want to attack him, they'll think of their daughter first. So then, that's why Kim Mushoshu managed to save Lesotho up this far. 140 wives, you say? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's uh, <laughs> then come back to the events of today. You believe that the walk looks to reawaken a thirst for self-knowledge in African youth. Um, is this because you perceive that young people in the con on the continent have forgotten who they are? Yeah, with the new system of education, they forget who they are. Most of the, our kids, you know, they don't have that opportunity like us, where we learn history and we become part of history. So they always heard about Kim Bushwe Shwe. They don't know who is Kim Bushwe Shwe. Some of them, they grew up in Lesotho. Some of them, they came to South Africa, original. They are from Lesotho. Mm. But then they don't know who they are. And most of the things that happen in Africa, we forget our roots. So that's why even our kids, they can't know exactly who they are. So the whole idea from Mushoshok is to say, hey, we are Musoto, hey, we are Zulu, but we are one community. So that's the whole idea from Mushoshok. Then that's why we are saying God, everybody have to be involved. Mm. And lots of people are coming from different countries to come and support Moshe mm. Talk us through the three-day journey. Somebody that is looking to get involved in this, what can they look forward to? They have to look forward to. That's what is important. It's 116 kilometers, and immediately you talk about 116 kilometers, people start to say, hey, what is going to happen there? But because we walk as a team, like Kim Mushoshu, when he took his people from Huanyang all the way to Tababusi, it was a teamwork. So first day we do that one case, 
Second day we do 54 case, the last day we do 31. Uh, we start at 7 in the morning at Mengwane, then we arrive at Harama Pepe around uh, 5 o'clock. So that one, you know, it's a bit easy. 54, we start 4 o'clock in the morning. Then we hit the road up to 10 o'clock midnight and uh, at night. So then basically sometimes there was one time we arrived at 11.30, close to midnight because uh, of the rain, because of the terrain, yeah. But what is important is you can do it. The last day we do 31 from Nadimung to, to, to Tabawasim, we start around 7 at the same time. Then we arrive around 4 at Tabawasim, Karakfra village. That's where the end of Mushosho walk. We normally arrive at Tabawasim at Foothills. That's Tababusibu culture. On top of Tababusibu, lots of people don't have opportunity to go on top of Tababusibu, but I still hope because they arrive on, uh, we arrive on Saturday, then on Sunday they can always hike on top. But because of uh, the strain that they mm. carried the, f the, the previous days, then, you know, it's always difficult in the morning to go on top of Tababusibu, but we always sleep at foothills of Tababusibu. Yeah, St. Lesotho is quite uh, mountainous. So when, yeah, when you get to the top, what do you witness people usually go through? I think there's uh, some ruins of uh, Kimushweshwe there. There's houses, there's graves of Kimushweshwe and Hoka, where men used to sit and decide uh, about Lesotho. So there are lots of things. There's a war which was between the Boers and Basotho, the war of Skriti, which happened 1865. So then there's still a place where you go up there, then you see, okay, this is the place where they killed weapon of the commander of the Boers at that time. So there's a lot of history on top there. And to go on top of that mountain, you have to go through uh, six entrances. You can't just go there. So then mm. during that time, they were well guarded and nobody could, they could see enemies from far. Nobody could go on top mm. without, mm. you know, being recognized. Mm -hmm. And again, the most important part, if those uh, entrances are well guarded, so then there's nobody who can go on top. And they used to put the stones at the edge of the cliffs because they didn't have guns and only thing that they had is spears and stones. So they put the stones at the edge of the cliffs. If the enemy comes, they just roll the stones down so that they can kill it. That's what happened with Vipenar. Mm -hmm. So basically, and that war why it was called the War of Skriti because then it was for the first time we would hear the sounds of the cannons and the guns. Then it was like, <laughs> So mm. they named the War of Security because of mm. that. Uh, <laughs> but I hear um, <laughs> so much interest coming through from the team. Um, somebody wants to know whether there's group packages and we can go as a team or, you know, um, can you go as an individual? How does it work? Yeah, you can go as an individual, you can go as a team. At the end of the day, for example, if you go uh, as individuals, you're allowed. And if you come as a team, you're allowed. But the most important part that the packages are different. You've got a 1,000 where you cater for yourself. You've got a 1.8 where we give seven meals so that you don't have to worry about food. What you have to do is only take your backpack and walk. And I think the most important part that people have to know that you have to be fit psychologically. Because mm. even if how fit you are, you go to the gym, you have done Kilimanjaro, you have done Comorid Mouth. If you are not physically okay upstairs then that's where you're going to have a problem so i always advise people that before they go to mushosho do some walks do some running smaller small you know walks then end of the, so that your angles yeah and even you when you go to the hikes then just check the uh, terrain that you think that okay when you arrive in lesotho your angles they will manage to carry you because what is important is if you're not prepared psychologically you will never make it again I always advise people that when you go to Moshashok, it's a teamwork. And people, when they arrive there, they think they are fit. They start the first day. Then the second day, it's another day. So you have to reserve your energy as much as you can. Mm. And I think that's the most important part. Then apart from that, anybody can do Moshashok work as long as you're prepared psychologically. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you yes, very much for yes. joining us. Taritabo Maradlan is the founder of the Moshwe Shwe Walk, a historical walk as well. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you very much. May have a wonderful day.